Wake up everybody, let's elevate your mind Live your life without limits, no more wasting time Don't forget to stay focused While continuing to stay on the grind Keep your vision real tight, then your future be bright Until the finish line Living Your Life Without Limits family, thank you for joining me today. We are live today and I have a topic to help us during this social isolation and it is called Remove the Clutter to Gain Clarity. There is so many things going on right now and I know we're frustrated. Many of us are used to being outdoors and being able to do things, but it's so important that we stay home. So since we have to stay home, let's take advantage of some things that we normally don't do. So today's topic is talking about removing the clutter so that we can gain clarity. What am I talking about clutter? All the piles and piles of stuff that we keep in the houses, in our offices, in our garages, in our cabinets, where we just say we're going to get to it when we have time. So family, we have time. And so we're going to dive into why removing the clutter makes a difference. So there's five reasons that we want to talk about to clearing clutter and how it can impact you and help you gain clarity. Because in this time of isolation, believe it or not, and you may have heard me if you're a a former listener or hopefully a new listener, thank you for joining, talking about we're in this time right now in the world where it's also an opportunity to reevaluate what we're doing and gain preparation. So when we come out, we're more stronger, more prepared, and we're using this time to enhance our lives, enhance our environment, and also strengthen our family bonds. There's probably way much more bonding now because we have to be together. But now let's take care of making sure we have clarity in the process. So I have for you a slide that's coming up that's called Five Reasons to Clear Clarity. And the first one is talking about low subjective well-being. There's actually been research that have suggested that when you have a lot of clutter and actually was the University of New Mexico that showed statistically that when there's so much clutter in your environment that it becomes like the enemy and it's not your friend and it makes you feel like you have no pride and no value and I don't know if you've ever been in clutter or have witnessed clutter or excessive clutter you may know people that are considered hoarders Any of you are hoarders? We're going to talk about it at the end of the episode where we're going to open it up for questions. Or do you know hoarders? And what happens when you have so much clutter, it almost does like a brain freeze for you where you're unable to think and concentrate because there's so many things. So it can weigh on your self-esteem. It can make you feel isolated, not having a sense of pride or value. Also, it can be reflective of how people perceive you, believe it or not. If a friend or family person comes over to your office or to your home or see a lot of things, they may get the wrong impression of who you are. But mostly this is not about their impression. It's about you and making sure you have clarity and you can see things and have things open. So it has the opportunity to create low subjectivity of well-being and how you feel about yourself. When you think about the word subjectivity, it's your perception of you. It's how you perceive yourself. So another one is research has also shown when there's a lot of clutter it is combined with unhealthy eating. There was an Australian study conducted that stated people ate more cookies and snacks in an environment which they offered choices of food in chaos and that they were filled with stress. So sometimes when things are all over the place 
and you can't see any type of structure to it, you tend to eat more. You tend to snack more. You tend to just grab. And I don't even know if you know, some people will grab and throw the bag down. So let me eat those cookies and let me put that down. Let me eat those chips. Let me put that down. Let me drink those cans of beer and let me just throw it down. And when you look, you have a whole bunch of junk around you. And what happens is when clutter builds up, it's hard to come out of it. It really is. It's hard to come out of it because it's, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So this is the time that you can now look at that, face it, and really embrace it and say, you know what? I'm going to get myself together. Number three, negative impacts on mental health. This is a huge one. This is a huge one because clutter has the ability to make you feel boxed in. I want to say the word suffocated. Have you ever walked into someone's house or walked into someone's office? I remember some years ago, I was really guilty of this. I was working and very, very stressful, working 16, sometimes 20 hours a day. And I would come into the office. I'd take a stack of papers and put it on another stack. I take a stack of papers and put it on another stack. I take another stack of papers and put it on another stack. And I was in and out the office. And then before you know it, you have piles and piles of papers. And when you get ready to look for something, you got to look through the pile. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? And that begins crowding. And the more the pile comes up, you say, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And before you know it, it's overwhelming. And it becomes, I'm going to do it tomorrow. So tomorrow becomes, I'm going to do it the next week. And the next week it becomes this. And when you sit down, it's so much, you almost like feel like you got a headache and you don't know where to start. So it creates in anxiety and stress. And actually it causes mental chaos. When you walk into an environment that's full of clutter or hoarders, or, and many people don't know that they're hoarders. They really don't because when they see hoarders, a lot of times when you see it on TV, you see this extremeness of things everywhere. I know I worked with a company uh, where I was contracted. It's actually my daughter's company and a shout out to her, Allies of Sobriety, where she had a client uh, that hired her not only for their coaching skills, but wanted her to come in and bring in a team to help remove the clutter and remove the hoarding. And many people don't think that they're hoarders. That's that situation. Sometimes in our own environment, we don't even realize we're hoarders, but we wonder sometimes when we're home, we have so much anxiety and so much stress, why we can't rest, why we seem more anxious, or why we don't wanna go home. If you have to step over stuff, or make a little path or can barely get in or barely get out. Nine times out of 10, you have too much clutter. And with this time of isolation, that can be extremely detrimental to your mental health. So this is why we're talking about it, family. How we're going to turn things around and clear out the clutter, gain mental clarity. So when we get out of social isolation, we're raring to go. All right. Another one, less efficient in visually processing. This speaks for itself. If I can't see anything, how can I visually mentally, mentally process what I want to accomplish or what I want to do? Even when it comes to your room, maybe you want to change your room around, but if you got so much stuff hanging here, hanging there, how are you going to do that? How are you going to organize it? Or mentally getting a picture for yourself having a mental vision of what you want to do. What are your goals? We talked about this in previous episodes of how taking this time to re-look at your goals and your plans that you set out for yourself for 2020. So all is not loss. We're going to get through this pandemic. We're going to come out of this on the other side. But what are you ready to do? Do you have a plan? And if you're filled with clutter in your physical environment, it will impact your mental environment, your mental mindset 
to get clarity on what is your next step or what it is you want to do. I was just talking to someone earlier today and they were saying, you know what? I cleaned up my room and got things organized and now I have a better sense of where I want to do and my creativity of things that I want to accomplish while I'm in this social isolation. I'm preparing things for my business and for my brand and that's what happens. Just from cleaning out things and clearing up things, you get more mental clarity. Another thing is less efficient in your thinking. And this is what I call mental clutter is a state of mind in which you can't inhibit in relevant information. It's a state of mind where your mind is so crowded that you can't think of what's unnecessary. You can't think of what's good and what's not good. You don't know how to dump what's relevant versus what you need to keep. So this is why it's so important to take this time. So you may ask, how do we get started? How do we start the declutter process? So I got a few tips for you to start that process. So we're going to look at this a little bit. First thing is to get mentally prepared. You know, you have clutter, you know, it's a lot of stuff. So the first thing you got to do is own that and mentally say, all right, I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to take this on and get mentally prepared to do it. Not say I'm going to do it, get mentally prepared. Clutter doesn't build up in one day. Sometimes it's months and it's years. And the thing about it is if we don't finally get to it, it will never change. So now that you have the time, because you're forced to be in social isolation. And I want to tell you, it is necessary that we stay in social isolation to save lives. So I'm an advocate of it. And these subject matters that I'm bringing to you are not things I'm telling you to do. I'm also doing the very same thing. Using my time wisely, clearing out things. So this list that I've prepared are not just things I'm telling you to do. I'm also taking the same information for myself. So before decluttering, visualize what you want that space to look like. So right now it may be full of papers. It may be full of clothes. It may be full of boxes. It may be full of all kinds of things. How do you want that space to look? So paint a mental picture a plan of how you want it to look. So when you get ready to start, you have an idea of what the end result needs to look like. And be prepared. As with anything, you have to plan for declutter. You need to not start piling on new things before you get rid of old things. That's a really bad habit. You know you got 2,000 pairs of shoes or you got 40 hats and they're all over the place don't buy another pair of shoes or another hat if you don't have a place to put them in so what am I trying to say don't buy any new items until you get rid of the clutter that you already have and in order to get rid of the clutter you have to plan for it so you need to have a trash and a treasure items this is what I'm calling it separate them we sometimes hold on to things for years and years and years, and we really don't know why we're holding on to it. We have garages full of stuff. We have offices and rooms full of stuff, and we haven't looked at it. We haven't touched it. It is collecting dust. And we need to now take the time to determine, is it trash or is it treasure? What's the difference? Treasure is what I value that means something to me. Maybe it's a family heirloom. Maybe it's just a moment in time or something that I'm going to use or that's beneficial or it has a sentimental meaning. It reaches here. It tugs the heart. So I have to keep that. But I have to keep it and put it in an organized way. Trash is stuff I've been holding on to and holding on to because I just feel I don't want to part from it. And that could be a whole lot of things. 
from papers that you've had that have faded through years to boxes to just stuff to toys and trinkets that you haven't used in years. Each person is different what that trash will be. But it's time for you to label treasure or trash. Which is it? And now let me set my life in order and get more organized. And if it's treasure, let me put it over here and find an organized way that I'm going to keep it and put it in a way that makes sense. That if it really is treasure, it's not laying all over the place. It's put up and protected because I'm leaving it as a legacy. It's something that I value. It's something that I appreciate. It's something I want to pass on from generation to generation. So, yes, I want to maintain that and protect it. So it shouldn't be hanging all over the place. Trash, I need to finally let it go. I need to get rid of it. So in doing that part of it, you have to have some materials. You need to have a shredder. You may need to have some trash bags. You may need to have some boxes or some file folders, some things to organize your life so that you can begin to deal with treasure versus trash. And what are some of the things that may be hanging around? Maybe you have a lot of clothes. Many of us are holding on to clothes that we've had that we haven't looked at or touched or keep saying, I'm going to wear it one day. If you haven't looked at it, touched it and can't fit it in over a year and you keep saying I'm going to get down to that size the reality is I'm not saying anything's not possible but the reality is you won't get down to that size take advantage and donate it donate those clothes to a needy organization or needy family give them away to someone who can really benefit, maybe a community or an organization or a country that doesn't have anything, or you know somebody who's struggling and you have all these beautiful clothes that you never will wear again or can't fit. You got this sides, that sides, and that sides, and you haven't seen it in years. Make room in your closet and donate those. Maybe it's clothes, maybe it's shoes, maybe it's hat. Anything that has a value, but you know, know yourself you're not using it, haven't used it, not going to use it, donate it. Now, some people still do yard sales. Some people sell things. Whatever is your preference. But what I'm trying to say is that if you have too much of it where you no longer have closet space and it's hanging all over the place or your closets are breaking down, it's time for you to clean the closets. So that's one thing. So maybe you have a lot of papers and receipts and files and books and all these different things or just things just piled up. So that's where the shredders and the file cabinets and the boxes and all those different items can come into place for you to be able to get more organized. So where are some areas that we struggle in a lot of times is our closets, a lot of times in our pantries, in our kitchens. I am notorious about expired things. I don't personally believe in eating expired foods. I don't personally believe in things that have expiration dates to continue to use them beyond their value. That's my preference. However, I know people that still do. This is a time to go through your cabinets, your, your pantries. Some people call them pantries. Some people call them cabinets. Look in your cabinets. And if you got canned goods that have been there for years and years with expired dates, throw them away. Wipe your cabinets down. Clean them out. Or you have a lot of something that have good dates and you have excess and maybe you no longer eat that food and it's good. Donate it to a charity that will take canned goods that are sealed, that they can give value to somebody in need. What am I trying to say? Your treasure or what you might consider trash may not necessarily be trash, but it's something you're not using that has a good value, that is not expired, that somebody in this crucial time with this world pandemic going on can use it. So give it away. When you give away, you actually open up more to come into your life. It doesn't always have to be something big, but it could be something that you don't use 
or no, you can't use or change. Maybe you're no longer eating those things or you were a family of this many and your family size decreased. But guess what? They're great canned goods. You have more than enough. Share them with somebody that's in need. It makes the heart feel good and you're doing a good service. So these are some of the things that you can do during this time of organizing yourself. All right. Schedule time to declutter on your calendar. You got to make a conscious effort to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm looking at it. I'm going to do it this day. Schedule it like we do everything else. We're on this time of isolation. We're on this time where we need to stay home. So you have time to schedule it, whether it's an hour a day, whether it's one day, a week, each person is different. You know your house, you know your office, you know your environment. So look at what the task is going to take and make a commitment to schedule the time. If you schedule it nine times out of 10, you'll commit. And guess what? Do it and maybe do it and put some music on. I like when I clean and organize to put music on. It passes the time. It relaxes me. Put some music on or maybe put an audible book on or put something inspirational on or something that helps you that when you're doing it, it doesn't feel like a task or drudgery, but it's occupying you. You're having a, you know, a relaxing time in organizing. And before you know it, you're done. And start the last one. Start with the place that's giving you the most headache. Deep dive into the problem. That's what I think. Start with that because nine times out of 10, when you tackle that one, everything else is easy. And maybe it's only one area. But once you start and you get it done, you will be surprised how you're going to feel. Much more relaxed less stressful, less anxious, and a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. Guess what? If you can declutter your environment, you can do the same thing with your mind. You can then look at, okay, I cleaned this area and it's been like this for months, maybe some people for years. Now, what else can I do? Let me look back over what else I want to do with myself. When I get out of this social distancing, what is it that I'm going to do now that I got a clean environment, now that I'm less anxious, these goals, how am I going to go about it? Now maybe I can take time and research, or maybe I'm in an environment where I can read and study more because I was supposed to take this exam. And now I can be able to take this exam and schedule it because guess what? Now I'm organized and I'm clear and I'm less anxious and I'm more relaxed so I can focus better. I have a clear mind where I can process the information better. I will tell you, A hundred percent. Not only does research tell you, but ask people when they have a lot. I will I will put it on me. If there's a lot of clutter around me, I can't think well. I need organization. I need that in order for me to continue to flow. So it forces me to have to take the time to put things in order. That way I know I'm at my best. I'm more creative. I thrive better when the environment is clean. So this is how we want to start that process. So these are some tips. I want to open up the phone lines to you. Anybody honest enough to talk about, is this hitting home for you? Or do you have any suggestions that we can share with others that may be on the line that you're doing? Or you would suggest to help clear clutter. We're going to open up the lines now for any viewers or listeners that may be on the line. Anybody on there, Mike? Let's see. All right, family, this time is open for you. You want to give a shout out or say anything, let me know. So we got one person asking, uh, why does someone become a hoarder? Okay. Who did they give their name so we can thank them or no? Uh, No, it's just a random question. Thank you. Random question for asking. Good question. I think, Um, sometimes it could be they're in a state of depression. It could be that 
they are procrastinators, something within their personality. Most of time, people that hoard are having some kind of emotional issue at the time that they started. And then it becomes so overwhelming, they don't know how to stop. So, and many times it's because of the environment that they're too busy. For some people, I'm just so busy. I'm so busy, I just can't stop. I can't stop. And I can't afford to pay for someone, so they just keep going and keep going. So there's very different meanings. A lot of times with the research that you read, hoarders is right is is directly connected to a person's mental health. Maybe they're dealing with depression, anxiety, stress. So it contributes to their hoarding. So they have some type of emotional issue that they're dealing with at the time of their life and that's how it develops and it's just a cycle that doesn't get that doesn't stop so there's there's many reasons so each person may be different but there's a lot of research that's out there that connects it to a person's emotional health so i hope that answered the question for you any other questions on there uh, that's it for now that's it for now okay family so as we're closing this I want you to understand that social distancing, I want to change it a little bit from clutter, is so important. I am urging everyone as a healthcare provider, which I'm a registered nurse, and I tell you guys this all the time, 28 years, it is so important that we practice social distancing and wash your hands. We were taught in nursing school and in healthcare to do this years years ago for many of us and some of those that enter it is so important that you follow this because it's not just for the safety and welfare for yourself and your loved ones it's for the public and we are our brother and sisters keepers so we all want to do our part and i know it's frustrating and we're tired and many of us are used to being free but you have a lot of time right now where you can do a lot of good for yourself and for your loved ones and ultimately for the public at large. So let us adhere to what our advisors are telling us. So stay connected. We've been putting things on our social media site. We will continue to do that. And you're hearing it on the news. But take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. But Use your time wisely because soon we're praying for the world that this will be done. And when it's done, life is going to pick up quickly. And you don't want to say, I don't have time to do it. So why you have the time, take advantage of clearing your environment, preparing yourself, focusing on loving yourself and taking care of yourself. As always, family, I thank you for allowing me to come into your homes every week. My endeavor on this show is to inform you and provide you information, to inspire you, to motivate you. But the decision is yours. It's always left up to you. But ultimately, I want you to live your life without limits, and that's every area of your life. So remember to love yourself, take care of yourself, because guess what? You're worth it. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm praying for you. And remember to stay connected to all the social media sites. We're posting information. We're even announcing a new contest for nurses that we're going to be holding where we're going to be giving cash prizes to nurses that you, the public, can vote on. Log in to info, livingyourlifewithoutlimits.com to get more information. So we do have one quick question jumped in from Sir Jet Singh. Yes. And he would like to know, um, what do you recommend for, or what advice would you give uh, older people right now dealing with of the quarantine and the coronavirus and just in general, the situation currently. Thank you, Singh. And he's calling from another country. Yes, he is. He's family to us. Thank you very much for joining. 
I would recommend the advice that the CDC is saying. One, stay in. Stay in. Have them be protected and make sure that they are washing their hands. If the older people, first of all, take their medications. Many of them have illnesses. Make sure they're taking their medications and eating properly a balanced diet and getting enough rest and drinking enough hydration. But if they have a mask or a, a, a made mask or if loved ones can make them a mask, that even in the home, if they're in the home with other people, wear their mask if they're in contact with people, even if it's a man-made, to protect themselves, but to stay in. If, if there's people that can provide the food to the older population, even in other countries, have their food delivered to them. Have their homes cleaned for them. Make sure people living in the homes are washing their hands. Make sure the people living in their homes are not sick. So if there's anyone in the home with an elder person that's sick, if there's a way they can stay with someone else so that they don't uh, impact the, the loved one that's elderly, I would highly recommend that. But it's staying in, staying in their place, keeping their environment clean, washing their hands, taking their medication, using a balanced diet and drinking plenty, plenty of water would be things that I would tell them. Okay. Any others? All right. Okay. Until next time, family, thank you so much for joining us. I love you. God bless you all. Stay tuned because we're just getting started. Bye-bye.